Please to welcome Amy Burns, music teacher, Far Hills Country Day School, and chair of the NJMEA, which stands for? New Jersey Music Educators Association. Yes, the Early Childhood Music Education. Um, listen, we were just talking before we got in the air. You've been teaching music for 23 years. Yes. When did you know you wanted to do this? Uh, way back when I was about 14, 15 years old. I loved my um, high school, and uh, I went to West Morris Bendham High School, so I loved the music program there. And they just sparked an interest in me, so I really started to study the clarinet specifically. I had already studied piano, thanks to my mother. And um, I knew I wanted to play music, and then my church had me also teaching early childhood Sunday school. So I knew right then and there I was going to be a music educator. Now, the, you're teaching children in pre-K, excuse me, pre-K up to fourth grade? I teach personally pre-K to fourth grade at my school. It goes pre-K to eighth grade at Far Hills, and I also do a waddler and a toddler program once oh. a month. <laughs> yes, a music, a mommy and music, mommy and right? me, yeah, caregiver and me. I want to give back to the community that I grew up in. So once a month, I do a free class, a music class for waddlers, six to 18 months and then toddlers, 18 to 3 By the way, how, uh, you were just talking before we got in the air about our initiative right from the start, NJ, which the so, website will go up as we speak right now. Yes. Again, and we just had this conversation previously with one of your colleagues, why is what you're talking about right now connected to right from the start, NJ? Well, as you know from the panel, you did a great three-part panel with the experts, and they drove home the fact. Dealing with birth to three. Yes, zero to three. And one of the facts on there was that by three years old, 80% of the brain is developed. And as they were pointing out, first comes the sound, then the language, then the vocabulary. So when your children are born, they're constantly listening to everything. And there are studies, like the um, Brain and Creativity Institute in Southern California did a study where they were, children were exposed to music and accelerated their brain development in speech, and sound and language and reading skills. And this is because the auditory sensory, that's where those are coming from. So it's really important and I feel very passionate. So I was very thankful that Far Hills supported me three years ago when I asked them if we could start this community program and have a mommy and me, caregiver and me music class. A Amy, you go even further than that. Mm -hmm. You've talked about the importance of exposing um, children who are not in this world yet <laughs> yes. You know, um, in a prenatal situation to music. Mm -hmm. well, Talk about that. Well, Zoltan, Zoltan Kodai, who is a Hungarian ethnomusicologist. You think I didn't know that? <laughs> I, I did not. I'm not, 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 sorry. No, I, I'm joking. I did no, not. but here's a great quote, <laughs> which is, a child's music education begins nine months before not in their womb, but their mother's womb. Really? Yeah, so like, you are exposed to music. One of the best things that I can tell a parent to do is yes, go to these classes that are given by you know approaches from Dr. Fire Robin to music together. These are great classes, but the best thing you can do from zero to three is sing to your child. And a lot of the parents will look at me like, I can't sing, people told me mm. I can't sing. And I always apologize on behalf of anyone who said that to a parent because you can sing, and your child from zero to three love you unconditionally. The payoff? Uh, the payoff is that they are gonna be, uh, be absorbed in music, and they're gonna be absorbed in language, and they're gonna be absorbed in um, just learning more about their parent in that respect, and what they love, and what they consider great music for them. And it's really just a great, it pays off in so many benefits, from reading, to speech, to sound, to language, mm. to vocabulary. You, you've said that musical aptitude peaks at seven? Yes, Dr. Fire Robin, Dr. John Fire Robin, and um, also uh, Dr. Edwin Gordon, they have the, the, Dr. Edwin Gordon has the aptitude test and said it peaked around nine. Dr. Fire Robin believes it peaks around seven and it is all that exposure to music. But as your panelists said, if they're not being exposed to music by age three. On the three, right from the start of yes, the series. Yes, the, if they're not being exposed to music by age three, then the neurons in their brain synapses are starting to die off. Really? Yeah, so like if you're not if you're not exposing your child to this music, then it just starts to die. So it's not too soon. Someone says, oh, it's too soon. Uh, no, not to expose them to music, not to have them listening, not to singing to them. No, always do that. Always. Oh, oh, help me understand something, but mm -hmm. aptitude. 
it's not the same as musical achievement. Right. A musical achievement, you're talking about in the moment, like winning a contest or getting first chair or Competitive auditioning. Situation. Yes. What's aptitude? Aptitude is that whole span of your lifetime of music and how it can further you in your future. It's really just constantly building and building and what you're learning and taking with you through every musical I'm, piece. I'm, I'm curious about something. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about this. You're part of a larger discussion mm -hmm. we're having with the panel. Technology. Mm -hmm. To what degree has it influenced how you teach music to students pre-K to fourth grade? It's very interesting. So technology has, you always read the articles where you don't get put the screen time in front of your children. And we're talking about passive technology. So when I'm talking about technology, I'm talking about educational technology. So for pre-K, no, I'm not using a lot of technology. They should be touching those instruments right. and feeling them and exposed to them like that and, and experiencing them. But what technology can do in a classroom of pre-K through four is it can do things that you couldn't previously do with technology. For example, we use a digital learning portfolio. So yesterday, my second, what? a digital learning portfolio called Seesaw. So um, yesterday, my second graders mastered reading and playing this melody on xylophones. I mean, they were fantastic. So I took a video and put it on this, their Seesaw journal. It pings to the parents' phones, and now my music classroom is on their mobile device. That's fabulous. I also can, through technology, share music to people in other states. Is that the global thing? Yeah, other Explain countries. That. Yeah, so through things like Seesaw, Soundtrap, I can share music that the students create in my classroom with other students around this country, around other countries. And Why is that important? Connect. It's really important for their education because Number one, technology is not going anywhere. <laughs> Number two, the global relations that children can make now will be with them forever. And who knows where they're going to end up? Who knows where they're going to live? And if they're starting to understand that their musical world is not here in this state, in this town, but goes well beyond. I'm curious about something before I let you go. Yeah. Your passion clearly comes through. People watching right now, they feel it, they see it, Thank sense you. it. 23 years at this. Just as strong, if not stronger? Stronger. I because love I love what I do. <laughs> Some says, oh, burnout, you say? No. I ask teachers this all the time. I'm fascinated No, by but I mean, where I work, Far Hills is extraordinary because they're so, um, they're so supportive of the arts, but they're also supportive of academics, and I think they have a great balance in their program. So, I mean, until they kind of say, okay, Amy, you're done. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're not even like, close. Here she comes again. No, I'm not even close. Um, hopefully they'll always ask me back every year because I love what I do. I love teaching there, and music is so important. It's so important. It's what, for me maybe get through school, um, because my progress reports constantly said Amy doesn't talk, but my music progress report wow. said Amy is the loudest singer in the classroom. <laughs> and so I, I'm very appreciative that music yes. is in our schools because it reaches children that academics don't always reach. Amy, thank you so much. Thank we'll you. We look forward to having you in a larger discussion with your colleagues. Thank you so much. Good job. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the PNC Foundation, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the New Jersey Education Association, Holy Name Medical Center in Teaneck, New Jersey, the North Ward Center, and by Georgian Court University. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.